Welcome back. In today's video, we are going to be talking about magnesium. It's probably not the magnesium that you're taking right now. This particular magnesium blend that we'll get into in just a few minutes talks about three different types of magnesium that can actually cross the blood-brain barrier. The magnesium you're probably taking now is something like magnesium citrate or even a chelate magnesium that I talked about last week, and that's great for muscle cramps and those types of things where we want systemic absorption. But there is, again, three magnesiums out there that we'll talk about in today's video that can actually cross the blood-brain barrier and why that is so important. It can help with memory. We'll look at a study, a couple studies that look at improving memory and focus and studies that help improve sleep. We need magnesium to get into our brain tissue to help us to improve our GABA or the brake system of our brain. And it also can help especially patients here at MD Custom RX that are suffering with PMS and hormone imbalance. This type of magnesium has been studied to help improve PMS symptoms, and we'll look at that study briefly as well. We'll look at how to take this type of magnesium. It comes in a powder form. And then I'll leave you with, again, some of those synergistic products that I would encourage you to look at if you're gonna start taking this magnesium. So in the first slide here that we're gonna be looking at is magnesium L3 and 8. So we talked a little bit about this last week, but as the slide says here, we need a sufficient amount of magnesium, which is essential for overall health and function of brain tissue. It is critically important. Some of the most important functions are protecting the integrity of the blood-brain barrier, serving as a cofactor for neurotransmitter synthesis, uh, melatonin being one of those, and modulating different receptors. So if you don't have enough magnesium, potentially those neurotransmitter receptors may not be functioning the way that they should. Magnesium L3 innate increases brain concentrations of magnesium uh, by the association of the 3 innate molecule with glucose transporters on the blood-brain barrier to facilitate the transportation of magnesium from the blood into the neurons into a concentration-dependent manner. So really what this study looked at is really pulling magnesium from the blood through the blood-brain barrier and into our central nervous system, into our brain tissue. The transportation of magnesium into the brain is usually restricted due to the tight junctions, tight regulation of magnesium in the blood. And having this combination of the magnesium with the L3 innate helps us facilitate that transportation. Real quick, this research was done at MIT, so Massachusetts Institute of Technology discovered this, again, magnesium L3 innate form that can cross the blood-brain barrier and raise magnesium levels inside brain cells. That is just phenomenal. Uh, what the study found, older adults with memory in, uh, concerns took magnesium L3 innate uh, for 12 weeks in this study. Brain magnesium levels went up. Participants had better memory, focus, and reasoning skills compared to placebo, and improvements were seen in both short-term and long-term memory. So the reference is there for you. And so this is such a fascinating thing to me because I'm going to live to be 120, and the last thing I want to be going, besides my obviously physical body, is my brain and my cognition. So I want to make sure I've got all the focus and concentration and memory as possible when I get uh, you know, above 100, maybe I'll live to be 140, who knows by that time with stem cells and so forth, try to keep the body uh, operating at optimal performance. Hopefully this magnesium L3 and 8 that I started taking a month ago will help uh, start kicking it in and keep my memory sharp. You know, what is this magnesium doing to help improve sleep quality? So we know this already, but poor sleep quality effects, as it says here on the slide, 60, 62% of adults worldwide the lack of intake of magnesium has been correlated with poor sleep in several studies. So again, we know correlation is not causation, but the point being here is that magnesium probably plays a role. And magnesium might help with GABA response and melatonin production. So, and also I would extrapolate that a little bit into serotonin as well too, because magnesium, when we get it into the brain, helps improve our mood. So, uh, that serotonin, that happy, good, feel, good hormone or neurotransmitter can help, uh, the, the production of it can be enhanced potentially by magnesium. So, and then GABA, as we talked about last week, is I think of it as the brake system of the brain. 
So magnesium can help with that anxiety, nervousness, symptoms, possibly. So, And then there was a study here that looked at, this was 76 adults, so not a huge study, with sleep disturbances. They took one gram of magnesium L3 and 8, so that's important to know the dosing is critically important. If you just take a half of a dose, you may not get the same results. Uh, that may seem obvious, but I have patients that come into the pharmacy and they say, you know, such and such didn't work, this or that. And I, you know, ask them, you know, well, how much did you take and so forth? And they're not taking the correct or the clinically effective dose a lot of times. So we got to make sure we're taking the right dose. Uh, in this study, the participants reported uh, improved sleep quality, uh, faster time falling asleep. I know for myself that can be a problem and improved time spent asleep. So Getting that six to eight hours of sleep, as we've talked about in other videos, can be very helpful for a multitude of different reasons. Uh, and then the participants in this study also reported improved mood and mental awareness. So it didn't give you that grogginess effect in the morning is, is my take home point on that. Is so even though it increased endogenous melatonin production, sometimes when we take melatonin from a straight extract, right, that there's patients that will come in and purchase, you know, five, 10 milligrams of a single capsule of melatonin to help them with sleep. And that sometimes can leave that patient groggy in the morning. Well, in this particular study, just by taking magnesium, they didn't have that um, next morning hangover effect, which is nice, right? And there was this particular study here that looked at men, uh, the group that received magnesium had lower levels of the stress hormone cortisol compared to those receiving placebo. So we know from this study that magnesium is doing something to modulate or attenuate the cortisol production in our body, exactly how that mechanism is, uh, you know, hasn't been figured out yet. But my point here is if you do a cortisol test, like we have a four point cortisol test here at the pharmacy and those cortisol levels are measuring elevated, something to consider that, you know, is often overlooked is what is that pa patient's magnesium status? Uh, they may be deficient. Let's dig a little deeper here and find out Oh, uh, is maybe their elevated cortisol level? Yes, it could obviously be due to stress, but it also could be potentially due to not enough magnesium. So again, just kind of digging deeper into some of these mechanisms, trying to find the root cause of the problems. So, and then another study here, symptoms of low mood and nervousness can be, can occur independently of stress. So we can still have these issues even though our cortisol might not be measuring elevated and are often experienced at the same time. In the brain, magnesium supports mood and emotional health by acting as a cofactor for the synthesis of dopamine. We talked about that as our dopamine is our pleasure neurotransmitter. It can also help with serotonin and inhibiting the re uh, release of the excitatory neurotransmitter called glutamate. And it also helps to bind GABA receptors. So not only does it uh, slow down or dampen the excitatory side of the neurotransmitter cascades, but it also helps to improve the, again, that brake system, the GABA or the inhibitory neurotransmitters of the brain. So here was another study that looked at magnesium L3 and 8, and this is in adults, older adults with stress and nervousness. These participants received either, again, important to know the dose here, one and a half to two grams of magnesium L3 and 8, had a significant improvement in stress response, nervousness, and fear symptoms compared to placebo. So again, if this is something that you may consider taking, again, be aware of the dose. And we'll get into the dosing here at the end of this video on exactly uh, how much is in a scoop of the magnesium 3 and 8 combination powder that we have here available. Uh, memory and concentration. So this is super important um, as far as those with cognitive decline. Okay, here's another study that looks at magnesium and memory and concentration. This is super important in my opinion. Uh, this is, this first study here is an animal model, of course, but it looked at magnesium L3 and 8 was found to increase synaptic density and function of neurons in the brain. Uh, in this, and there was another study that looked at uh, adults with mental focus concerns. So those possibly, again, I'm extrapolating here, but with ADD, ADHD, the majority of the patients that received, or the participants, I should say, of receiving the magnesium L3 and 8 demonstrated improvements in IQ and attention. So again, if you look at the patient populations that might benefit from just simply magnesium L3 and 8, I would be looking at patients with attention deficit disorders, 
Again, talk to your doctor, your medical professional about this, of course. If you want more help, you can certainly call the pharmacy as well. So again, this is obviously all for informational purposes only. Uh, here's some more studies that looked at uh, older adults receiving magnesium L3 innate and had a statistically significant improvement in their mini mental state examination score. So again, just providing you with more information that uh, this magnesium has been studied, uh, fairly well studied in my opinion, and there's some pretty impressive results with this, with this type of magnesium. Uh, this next study here looked at, again, older adults with memory concerns. Here again, they're re receiving a significant dose, uh, one and a half to two grams again, demonstrated improvement in executive function in their working short-term memory and episodic memory. So if you or somebody or somebody you know that's out there, I would encourage you to take a look at this. If I haven't mentioned this already in this video, if you've gotten this far, I would please give this video a like. Don't forget to subscribe. Nearly over half of you still have not subscribed to this channel. If you are somebody that is interested in functional medicine, functional pharmacy, I don't, I, I don't know I should coin that term. I haven't heard that yet, but I call it functional pharmacy. Looking at supplements and things like vitamins and minerals like magnesium today that can have a very profound impact on your health, I would encourage you to subscribe to our channel. I try to put out videos every week now and provide you with information and education on, again, just basic things to help improve your health. A lot of it is going to come from a supplement vitamin standpoint, but I also try to include just those healthy lifestyle tips and tricks as well. So. Uh, the next magnesium on the board here is magnesium acetyl taurinate. As it says here, I will refer this refer to this as MAT, but um, acetyl taurinate magnesium is highly bio, bioavailable, uh, which again, there are studies that help to show that is, this is very brain supportive. The acetyl group in this magnesium, as well as the amino acid, uh, chelate increases its solubility in lipophilic structures. So what do we mean, we mean by that? Lipophilic is fat, so the brain is primarily composed of fatty acids and fatty tissues. And so getting more magnesium, or, or I should say the appropriate amount of magnesium in the brain, uh, in my opinion, in the research that's out there, is critically important for brain health and brain function. Once inside, as it says here on the slide, once inside cerebral tissues, the magnesium can exert its brain supporting actions that we just talked about earlier with the magnesium L3 and 8. So here's another form of magnesium has high bioavailability getting into uh, through the blood-brain barrier. And this talks about, again, uh, the acetyl uh, taurinate form of magnesium that's in this product. It enhances uh, delivery of taurine into the brain via the acetyl group, which facilitates its beneficial neurological actions like preventing excessive excitatory activity through modulating, the again, the brain system of the brain. I've talked about that multiple times already, the GABA receptors, uh, glycine and glutamate receptors, those are the excitatory ones. So again, it, it tones down the excitatory and, and tones up the inhibitory, enhancing uh, mitochondrial ATP production. We talked about this in a previous video, how magnesium helps to improve ATP production increases antioxidant protection and maintains can help maintain a normal inflammatory balance. So all of this from magnesium acetyl taurinate. So something again, I would encourage you to look at. So we'll get into the dosing and the specifics of this product in just a minute. So this was the study that I mentioned briefly uh, at the beginning of this video where magnesium acetyl taurinate can help with PMS symptoms. In this particular study here, um, about 50% of women do suffer with PMS symptoms. Uh, poor magnesium status has again been correlated to these particular symptoms like headaches, irritability, nervousness, and sleep disturbances. We already talked about how magnesium, when it gets into the brain, can help with those nervousness issues and those sleep disturbances. So it's no surprise when we get magnesium acetyltoronate into the brain tissue, it can help with these symptoms in, in, these, in this particular patient population. In this study, it only looked at 19 women over three menstrual cycles, uh, resulting in, again, but it was statistically significant, nonetheless, in a reduction of over 20 symptoms related to PMS. So more studies and work need to be done there. So finally, to the last form of magnesium that's in this particular supplement, this is the magnesium glycerol phosphate, or uh, MG. Um, but magnesium glycerol phosphate is another 
magnesium complex with high bioavailability, getting into the bloodstream, into our tissues. That's really the important take home point here with this entire video. The addition of delivering magnesium, the glycerol uh, component of magnesium glycerol phosphate has additional brain supporting functions. The glycerol backbone here, if we'll call it that, has been found to act as a metabolic reserve for, here we go again, mitochondrial ATP production in neural tissue. So guess what's going to dovetail really well in with this magnesium? Methylene blue. You, you guessed it. Uh, the other thing too is going to be vitamin D. So, uh, And then it helped, especially with, again, GABA neurons uh, in the hippocampus or and the hippocampus. Glycerol also serves as the backbone for phospholipid synthesis which is a major component of neurological membranes in the central and peripheral nervous systems. So uh, both in the brain and in the body is the easy way to say that. So the best way to take this, in my opinion, is just mixing it with water. I personally take mine just, you know, with the RO water right out of the spigot. So it's roughly room temperature. You can mix it in with colder water or colder beverage, but it, my experience has been it doesn't mix as well. It takes a little bit to dissolve and mix up. So just be aware of that. Um, and then when do you take it? Well, as we talked about, it can help with sleep, but it can also help with focus. So you have to try this out a little bit for yourself and see what works best for you. I personally take mine twice a day. I take a half a scoop in the morning and then I'll take a half a scoop when I get home from work. So that's just my personal routine. Again, you try what works best for you. I will put uh, a slide up here that looks at the uh, link to our Shopify account. So if you're interested in this particular product, it's called Brain Mag Plus. We have it for sale on our website. Again, it's mdcustomrx.shop. I would encourage you to take a look at that. And if you have any questions, please give our pharmacy a call. We talked about this last time in our video. We are five pharmacists strong here at our pharmacy. We're very proud of that. So don't feel that you're bothering us at all. Please leave a comment below if you've taken magnesium L3 and 8 and what type of benefits you've seen. I always like to, again, read those comments and I think it just helps to develop a good community out here in the YouTube world and see what other people are doing and what their benefits are from a lot of these products out there. So magnesium L3 and 8, to recap, uh, is very helpful for crossing the blood-brain barrier. And then we talked about magnesium acetyl taurinate. And then lastly, we talked about the magnesium glycerol phosphate. So if you again found any value in today's content, please like, subscribe, and share this video with a loved one. And in next week's video, I quite haven't decided what we're going to talk about, but I think we're going to go down the methylation rabbit hole and talk about SAMe. So if you're interested in that, stay tuned for next week's video on methylation, hopefully. Have a great night.